Hey YouTube, today is the first in a series on how large language models are made. As some of you know, I'm a software engineer who specializes in natural language processing and large language models. And I wanted to create a series that makes this kind of digestible so there won't be a lot of overly gross technical depth, but rather just enough to understand how are they made and allow maybe for people to jump into it and get started. So today we're going to be talking about tokenization, specifically byte pair encoding and how it's achieved. So let's get started. The first step to creating a large language model is to first create a representation of the characters that the computer can understand. This process is called tokenization, which is made of three different types, character, wordwise, and subword tokenization. With character tokenization, each individual character is treated as a token. In word-wise tokenization, each individual word is treated as a token, although in subword tokenization, we want each individual word part to be treated as a token. At the end of this, each of these variants are mapped to numeric representations that the computer can understand. The end result of this process is a vocabulary, meaning that in, for example, character tokenization, each individual letter maps to a token. In this case, S could map to 11 and O could map to 13. In word-wise tokenization, each individual word maps to a token. For example, some could map to 121 and words could map to 137. In subword tokenization, we try to break out the individual word parts such that some could go to 11 and word could go to 41 and the letter S could map to 33. In modern language models, the most popular type of tokenization is subword tokenization with the most common type of this being a variant called byte pair encoding. The first step in byte pair encoding is to start with a vocabulary, in this case A, B, C, all the way through Z, and to take some input text and start to find the most commonly occurring pairs of characters and encode them into new characters. In this case, IN occurs twice and double O also occurs twice. So they will be encoded in new characters, in this case IN mapped to the character 1 and OO being mapped to the character 2. We then replace each occurrence of these pairs with their replacement values, IN with 1 and OO with 2. Once we have finished this, we will run the process again searching for the next pair to encode, leaving the substituted values in their place, and we find that this is the pair 1G which decodes to I and G. We then go back and replace all instances of the 1G pair with the new encoded value 3. Our new token pairs 1, 2, and 3 all continue to exist as tokens, and for larger volumes of text, this iteration would continue multiple times until we have a more finalized vocabulary. At the end of the byte pair encoding process, that is the end of the tokenization process, and these tokens will then be used by the large language model in its embedding space once we train it. But that will be part of the next video, specifically in the next part of this series. If you would like to learn more, please like and subscribe to the channel, and please let us know what you would like to hear about next, and please stay tuned for our video later this week on AI and medicine. Take it easy.